The Rugby League World Cup has continued along last weekend with the quarterfinals being done and dusted. The first quarterfinal saw Australia knock Samoa off by 46 to nil. We were hoping it wouldn't be a blowout, and that's pretty blowout-ish to my left way of thinking. Ren Samoa, let's... Yeah, I mean, we said most of it what we thought last week. It was a disappointing campaign for Samoa. They didn't deserve to be in the quarterfinals. Ireland should have been there. We spoke about it last week. Um, the scoreline reflected their whole campaign. There needs to be something done within the camp. There are a lot of people are upset about Samoa not doing too well. You've seen Fiji, Tonga, Lebanon, all these second-tier nations progress and do well. You mentioned that Samoa had regressed. It was completely unacceptable. Um, and some, the heads will roll. They're, they're going to change the whole system. I personally think they need to bring some, some old boys back into the, to the mix. Nigel Bungana, Tony Pulatua, David Solomon, all these guys that are legends of, of the Samoan jersey and well-respected. Can I say something? Just I know what the Samoans, Tongans, all the island, island uh, countries represent very proud people and they respect their elders big time. Why isn't a guy like Ruben Wiki in camp? Because I hear some rumours, man, a few other boys are just sort of pretty much doing what they want and not really respect and they're not really they don't respect Parrish as a coach. So they just that's a that's a dead set disrespect straight away. When you when you go to bed at three or four o'clock, eat whatever you want, you put on weight during camp, that's pretty much a Double fingers up to the coach going, I don't have to listen to you. I mean, if you've got Ruben Wiki, Nigel Vungana in your yeah. camp, you think if Nigel goes, you're, you do this, A, B, and C, and Ruben says that as well, you're not going to go against them guys. It is definitely a respect thing. Ruben Wiki's a perfect. He is. He's God, a I don't know why legend. he isn't in that. Played team. his whole co- career with NZ, but very well respe- respected. Monty Beatham's another one. Yeah. That you bring these guys into a Samoan camp, you go to bed at the appropriate exactly. hour. Exactly. And oh, look, I've heard whispers. I don't know if they're completely true, but I heard the boys are staying up late. Um, they weren't getting on the piss. They weren't doing anything stupid. No, just standing no, no, up, no. sleeping, and about, eating shit. You, and you, you can tell you're, that. You're there to do a job for six, seven weeks. Get yeah. it done. Um, I even heard a rumour they weren't turning up to community events. Th- things like that. You know, that's not acceptable because yeah. every other nation's been doing it. I will follow everyone else's Insta story. I will never blame the players. They need to hold some responsibility for their performances, yeah. but it comes from the top. You it know, all trickles down from the top and then it comes the all the way back down. And then you've got to hold senior players accountable because these other players are not following them. Yeah. Well, and that happens in every single nation. And Samoa is, is one of them second-tier nations pushing to be a first-tier yeah. nation and it's just not good enough. Yeah, well, yeah, they've definitely regressed, like you said. And Well, what's, uh, what's the I don't want to be I, this. I just, well, I, it's about it's, – they need a complete overhaul. 100%. They, I've, heard there's, I've heard there's been rumblings from 2013 mm. World Cup about Parrish mm. – and all the players not liking him, not respecting him. So if that's happening all through the whole Samoan camp, and you can see it because it reflects on their performance. Well, yeah, well, it does. I it's got to go boom, straight go, out, and just clean the whole lot of them out. I'm, I know I'm Australian-born, but, I, you know, Samoa is everything to me. That's the birthplace of my father. So now that they've regressed, it needs a whole overhaul. Like 100%. Been, and they need to the get the to day, the core of it because look, everyone needs to be held accountable. Personally, I think... The senior playing group was outweighed by the young fellas in the team. That's why I'd have a lot of the old boys in there to make a stronger senior players group and get control of it. Because I know they had a lot of fun and, you know, it all is, it's all about having fun, especially. Balance. But it's balance, correct. I know Joey Leilua pretty well and I know what sort of influence he does have in, in any side he's in. The Canberra side, the Newcastle side and the Samoan side. And if he wants his, if he doesn't get his own way, and if he's not, if he doesn't respect you, you're not going to get the best out of him. Mm. Like he respects Wayne Bennett, he respects Ricky Stewart. Mm. That's why he was, he's, he's one of the best centers in in the NRL. Mm. You know, so you have got to put a guy like Nige, Nigel Vangana, Ruben Wiki, in positions where he has to deal with them every day. Yeah. But if he doesn't respect you as a person, he will just do whatever he wants. Yeah. And he's the key to most sides. He's such a talent. You need to get around him, nurture him a little bit, baby him a little bit because everybody's different. That's why Wayne's so good and Ricky's so good for him. Yeah. You've got the best football out of him and they just need to do that with, with, with BJ because he does control that later, the, the younger part of the group. Yeah. You know? And then you've got the senior players that sort of, they don't really want to deal with it. So you need to get everybody together and a, and a person like, you know, like a Wayne Bennett would have been perfect for a Samoan side. He's the future of Samoan. Mm. He's so talented. He's a strike. He's aggressive. You just get the best out of BJ, and not just BJ. There's a lot yeah, of guys. Like, he's, just, he's a raw talent. I think, I think you know, with the names they had on paper, 
It was disappointing. And that's what's the most disappointing thing. And you're disappointed, I'm disappointed, the whole Samoa's disappointed. Even the NRL fraternity, everybody's disappointed in Samoa. Mm. It's like, why aren't you in the top four? Mm. Or at least the finals will make, compete. I was expecting, a, a, you know, maybe a, a, a 30 to 18 game. You know, like not, I, not a 46 nil. Do final. you know what? Like, I, I get what you're saying. And Samoa did have a good side. To think about him in the top four, like for me, they got beaten by New Zealand, which I would have picked them to get beaten by. They got picked. Yeah. They got beaten it's by the, Tonga. The... It was the Scottish game. If if they had put Scotland away and then they come into the Australian game and they'd got beaten by a bit, then you'd almost forgive them. But that yeah. Scotland game, it just shined a light on the fact that there's problems I, there. I, yeah. I expected them to beat New Zealand. I expected them yeah. to beat Tonga. Did you? Yeah. I, absolutely. I, thought, I was, I was absolutely. thinking. I thought all th them three would have been. One's going to beat one, one's going to beat the other. It's just, it was that competitive on paper. Mm. But it just looked like a blowout. You know, and someone like Frank Pritchard, he played in his last World Cup. You know, yeah, well congratulations, done, Frankie. Frankie. You've been a, a pioneer for, for, for Samoa in the last few years. I know it took a lot for him to leave New Zealand and, and come over to the Samoan side. And he probably led the way for a lot of uh, young Samoans to play for Samoa. So the future's bright for Samoa, but they've just got to get it right. You know, there's a lot. After this there's, World uh, Cup, still, especially, getting, more. especially getting beaten by Fiji in Samoa, Fiji's, that buddy team wasn't that yeah. great over there. So mm. it, go, it stems back to their, their trial match against the under-23 countryside was terrible as well. And it, it just trickled straight through to their World Cup. Well, they can only get better. And yeah. uh, I'll tell you who is getting better, and that's Lebanon. They have, they have yeah. just performed so well in this World Cup and, and for the side that they've got where they've only probably got five or six mm. well-known players. In the right position, but In the right positions. Yeah. But Tonga, I mean, everyone, everyone expected Tonga. I, look, I, I, I wrote them off last week and, and, and I'm sorry I did now because Tonga were flat at the start, but they still were completing sets. They yeah. were still coming at them and, and Lebanon held and, and a couple of decisions go their way. They potentially win that game. Yeah, that's that's awesome for the. It's another good feel good story for the World Cup from a disappointing pool stages. You know, yeah, really, yeah. I still can't get over the logistics of the whole thing. I think it was rubbish. Whoever organised the games, yeah, wherever yeah. they went, needs to be sacked. Sorry for getting someone else sacked, but far out. It was a joke, really. <laughs> yeah. But Lebanon, good on them. And we were playing on on the weekend. We were getting updates of the score and everything like that. Yeah. And to see them go so close. Tonga put a lot into that New Zealand game. Yeah. You know, and, emotionally, and, oh, yeah, well. emotionally, and you could forgive them for having a close game against Lebanon on paper, you know. They've, they're not yeah. even com yeah. comparable at all. Mm -hmm. But for them to put up a fight, you know, that's a sick, really successful yeah. World Cup for Lebanon. So congratulations, especially to Robbie Farah, Tim Manor, Mitchell Moses, them guys leading from the front, leading the way. You know he's perfect and he's going under the radar? Freddie. Yeah. Well, he's basically he's coached perfect himself for a World into, Cup. He's poached himself in an origin. Oh, he'd from, be perfect for the World know, Cup. He's so. perfect for the World Cup. He's perfect for that squad. Bought into the whole culture. He picked the right people in the right positions. And, you know, Tonga come out. They weren't off their game. Way no, off. They no. completed their sets. Yeah. But, like, Lebanon knew where the, where the weakness was. And mm. it's on Tonga's right edge, Conrad Harrell. If he, doesn't, if he doesn't pick his game up in the first half of the England game, England will score three or four tries down the edge there. Yeah. It takes him a couple of couple of sets to wake up, and then he gets on his game. He cannot afford to do that this week. No. Because, you know, the, you can only rely on Taumalolo and Fafida and Jennings and all the sort of blokes to get you out of trouble every now and again. But in this semi-final, you're out. Yeah. And you can't afford to do that. And, and Freddie, going back to – he bought into their culture. Yeah. So you saw a lot of footage of him going to the Lebanese restaurants within the yeah. community and having fun. That's what it's about. When you're not from that nation – you got to you got to yeah. buy into what they're about. Yeah, you know that's the difference. Wolfie bought into the Tongan culture. You got to buy into what they're about to get the best out of these players, and that's why Freddie's done a fantastic job. Yeah, and it don't. Yeah, that's what I said to Lebanon, about Lebanon last week. They have a massive crack. Yeah, you know, and, I, and you know Robbie Farrow, Like congratulations, mate. Mitchell Moses. Mm. You know Tim Manor. The, the kid on the left centre. He's about eighteen years old. Was South. Like he carved Conrad up. Yeah, two tries. Yeah, he did. This is another feel-good story, as you said, to yeah. just a disappointing pool stage and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, like, you know, put Lebanon on the map. Well, the feel-good story from the weekend was obviously the Fijian side beating yeah. the New Zealand side, which I don't think anyone really picked. And, I thought um, that was a joke when someone said that. So I've, I've walked out of the, when we finished the Legends of the League, and some bloke goes, oh, who do you reckon will win out of New Zealand or Fiji? I didn't even know the game was over. I said, well, New Zealand should win. I'd love Fiji to win. He goes, well... Fiji just won 4-2. I was like, you're kidding yourself. You know, just kept, kept walking. 
and they end up winning. I just I still Crazy. can't believe it now. It's, it's ridiculous. They like, look like the better side as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, watched, I, did. I watched the you game. Know, Braden Williami, centre. You know, he, he was outstanding as a rack, right back row. Yeah. That kick out kid. Billy kick out, man. He's he a is a beast. They had and, no and fear, you know. They got Hargraves to power. They just went out there, put it all on the line and got the win. They made more line breaks. Yeah. Braden went over twice. Yeah. You know, once he dropped the ball over the line, the second one he got pinged for, for a uh, double movement. But they just looked dangerous and they had a massive crack. They had a r real good go. Kevin Naguama yeah. had an outstanding game. Can he like, stop making me cry on the weekend? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? Like so he, I was watching that yesterday. Yeah, so I just watched the, the passion yeah. that they yeah. had installed in that jersey, every single one of them. When they were winning, like he's in, in tears. Like he has, he just put, wears his heart on his sleeve and he just cries his eyes out. And it's just like, like I played a couple of years in Newcastle with him. I knew how passionate he was, him and Wes, two brothers about Fiji. But like this was... The next level, mate. They're in the final four, and it's, it's unreal. Well, Fiji, Congratulations, Fiji's, Fiji. Fiji's a, a, it's a rugby country, and now, like, I've got a mate in Fiji, and a big shout-out to, to Epi. I know you're pretty excited about this whole thing, and, and he loves his rugby, Epi, but he was straight on the text to me, and all of a sudden he's a convert, you know? Like, they're, they're, they're all watching it. They're all so involved in it, and it's great for rugby This league. is their yeah. third semi-final in the World Cup. Yeah. You know? So they're doing something right. Yeah, that's right. And... We can't ride it. They've got a big task this week against the Aussies, but I don't think the Aussies are playing that great either. No, they're not. Yeah. I just I think Australia was, you know, they, they didn't complete that well against Samoa. As I said last time, they're there for the taking. I think it's like they're going to come out of the England or the Tongan game to get them, and they're going to have to play unbelievable as well because Australia's going to show up. But, you know, they, they did the job last week. I mean, Valentine Holmes, five tries, but everything like that. But they don't, they're not that as physical. They're not, going to, they're not going to beat the crap out of Tonga or, or England. They're just going to beat them with skill. You're going to have to wait for Billy Slater, England, Billy Slater, Cameron Smith, Cooper Cronk. England weren't that impressive either. I mean, Papua New Guinea did everything they could. Like, it, it was the fairy tales over to some extent. And, and Papua New Guinea, a little bit like the Hunters in that, um, in, in that Queensland Cup or when they came down to play yeah. in the grand final, they got blown away early. They just didn't look like, I don't know whether they got overawed or yeah. what it was, well, but they just didn't compete the way we know they can in those first sort of 20 minutes. As I said, I'm, I said they'll get a big shock when they when they face one of the first first tier clubs. Yeah, well, they'll get a big shock when they face a first tier country like in England, Australia, anyone like that, and and away from home as well. Yeah, you know the logistics and just playing in front of your home crowd and everything like that was just great for the World Cup to watch every week. Mm -hmm. But go down to Melbourne, different different environment, and England weren't there to muck around. You can see that they scored six tries. You know, six mm -hmm. tries to one, and it was disappointing. But congratulations to New Guinea. You know, Absolutely. it was an outstanding campaign. So. Obviously, obviously, the next World Cup is going to be big for New Guinea. That's going to keep growing and growing and growing. So, the Hunters and the Kumuls, well done. Yeah, they're on, on the, the rise. Year. That's for really? sure. Going back to the New Zealand game for a second, what does that mean for New Zealand now? I mean, you talk about Samoa needing a clean out. I mean, do, do you blame the coach? Do you blame the players? I mean, Adam Blair and, and, and Sean Johnson were criticised quite heavily after the game for coming out and, and the, essentially making some comments saying, well, we're on the right path. The disappointing thing about those comments was that it was an excuse, an indirect excuse straight away. Oh, well, the fans and the media got what they wanted. Not putting your hand up and saying, well, they did say Fiji were the better side, but you, you're on 800 plus. You know, well, these guys are on peanuts. Mm. You know, man up and say, congratulations to Fiji. Don't blame everyone else. You know, these they're a first-tier nation and they got beat by Fiji. They, were, they needed to win that. And mm. those guys... You know, I, th I, I, Blairy, I thought had a good crack through the hole. I've never seen him not have a crack, Adam Blair. Yeah, yes, he's right. a tough footballer, he's tough. you know, and he's a good leader for, for New Zealand. They came out and retracted their comments about uh, what they said after the game, but it was just a, it was just an excuse straight after the game. That's what pissed me off. Retraction, my ass. You know what I mean? Once you say something, it's out there. Yeah, you can say sorry as much as you want, but I mean, like they should just be given. They can't be saying they're rebuilding and they're in a great stage when mm. you've got 11 people that played for you in the Anzac test and your last test defecting to other countries. Mm. You can't say that's good for your nation. Well, there's something You're, wrong. There's something there's wrong. Something. Why doesn't people want to yeah. play? You're not building into anything. Half half your squad left for some reason. No one, no, Nobody knows. Tell them Lolo leaves. Well, I'm glad they did. You're, yeah, well, well, I'm, I'm glad, glad I'm they glad did. Because no one would give a shit about this World Cup, as we've been saying, but like... You know, Manu Mau's gone, Takiaho's gone, you know, like Fusi Tua's gone. All these guys are just gone, no one played for Tonga. They still have enough talent to have made the final. 100% they for should sure. be they should be disappointed but then be happy for Fiji. They don't come out and say these comments. That's bullshit what Sean Johnson said, like the fans and media got what you want. Like he's like, 
These contracts probably more than the whole Fijian team. Oh, probably not Hainsey's, but like he's, he needs to put his he needs to put his hand up and take New Zealand by the scruff of the neck and take them to the next level. He's put they put so much into him. You know, like yeah, I, you yeah. never, I don't worry about what Blair says. He rips in every game. I've never seen him rip. I've never seen him not rip in for that mm. New Zealand jersey. He's that proud. Mm. But Sean Johnson, just shut up. I just thought one thing Blair did say was that after the game was he said it was great. For rugby league to have a tier one nation getting knocked off by Fiji, I think Blair I, should be the only one to say something. You know, I, I can, I, I understand what he's saying. It was probably people have jumped on it because it probably wasn't the time for it to be said. But I understand what he's saying. You know, in terms of rugby league, it was great to see Fiji win. I just don't know if you say it directly. It pisses me off when you when you hear a bloke like Sean Johnson say anything. You know, when you're Blair and you're the captain, you can say whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like, don't, you don't just don't comment. You should be just more disappointed in yourself than anything. Mm. that you didn't get them to the next level because everybody relies on him. I've said it so many times. There's that much, that much talent in that kid. And when they keep getting loss after loss after loss, people just lose faith. So Australia now play Fiji. Uh, we're actually going to be doing a live stream uh, on that game. So on Friday night, make sure you tune in uh, via Facebook page. We'll be publicising it, but we'll be doing a live stream. And Fiji, I'd love to see them compete. Oh, they'll they, 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 they they have compete. no fear. No fear going into this game at all. They'll have a cr massive crack. I'm not saying they're going to win, but <laughs> who knows? I thought New Zealand was going to put 30 on them. I honestly thought that. Mm. When the guy said 4-2, I was like, what's that, after five minutes? Yeah. But, you know, like, I thought, I honestly thought there was going to be a 36-10 to 12, uh, 10 game. I just didn't think New Zealand was ever going to get beat. I was either going to think New Zealand, England <laughs> final, or Australia. Well, at least we can sit back and do that live stream. So basically we don't have to listen to the commentary. We can talk about what we think of the whole game and yeah. on Friday and enjoy it. There's no point in trying to make any predictions because we've been shocked the last two weeks. So. <laughs> All we've been right with was, was PNG through the, through the pool stages and Tonga. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tonga, Tonga play England in that second semi-final. And I don't think there will be a person in Australia other than English-born supporting England. There are probably not many people around the whole world supporting England. You uh, will. England, please. <laughs> no, thank you. I will be supporting Tonga. And yeah. I, look, I think Tonga can win. Yeah, I, I honestly do. Yeah. It's the same as the Australia and, and Fiji game. I don't know who, who's going to win this game. You mm. know, England's been good in patches. Tonga's been brilliant for most of it. So if they play, if England play into the hands of Tonga, and try and match them through the middle, they're in for a shock because the Tongan mm. boys will make big mates. I know the England team's big. Take Aho didn't even play. He's been their best forward. He's been the best player of the whole tournament. Mm. So if you, you – know, I know the problems are big boys. You Johnny know, Walker. Like, well, he's Scottish. But, you know, Sammy Burgess is a beast. But, yeah. you know – Chow Malolo's a beast. I mean, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, they match up so good. It's just like, as I said, they're going to get beat. If, if Conrad and that right edge don't show up, they're going to get beat. Well, Ryan, Hall, Ryan Hall's on that win and Watkins and their talented they, players. They Fusatua, and, Fusatua they, they, and Conrad versus them two. And McGilvery. going to come down with it. McGilvery, oh, he's, he's like having another forward out in the field. He's the way he's carries from, from the wing, yeah. you know, from dummy half. He's, he's lining. He's, he's I just almost impossible possible to tackle. Um, the thing, the difference between the, the forward packs is the Tongan boys have footwork. Mm. You can't mm. tell me Hill's got footwork. No. James Graham doesn't have footwork. They're just hard workers. So you've got to get blokes like Takiyaho, Fafita, Taumalola, footwork, quick quick play of the ball. Just play them through the middle, complete, complete. Wait for that clutch moment, pull the trigger, and I think they'll beat them. I think the only bonus that they have, the England side have, the only plus is their nines. They've got Roby and Hodson. They're world class. Mm, yep. Versus the two Tongan guys, Katoa and Harvili. They're barely even first graders. They don't need... I know, that, I know that, I know that, but they're, they but they're, give early but how tricky Hodge, Hodgson is and Roby around that ruck, they could go, they could be, they'll be going straight, they'll be trying to go straight through them with footwork. They all got a little bit of footwork. That's what, they'll, that's what they'll try and do. I think Wayne Bennett will be It'll saying, be, let's tire them out through the middle. Yeah. Let, that's where Tonga need to be smart with their markers, not engage, and just have good line speed, get their A's and B's set, and really slow the, the ruck down. Put the ball into touch. Yeah. Just keep kicking Can it I, out, keeping it out, kicking it out. I was saying, look, people keep underestimating the fitness of this Tongan team. Takiyahu plays 70 minutes. Fafita plays 70 minutes. The back row plays 80 every week for their club team. Mm. They're not guys that play 20-minute stints. Yep. They're guys that play big minutes in big games all the mm. time. So don't try and go through the middle and try and tire them out because you'll get a shock. You know, so, 
you know, it'll be interesting to see what game plan Wayne has for him. But, you know, on paper as well, I don't think anyone can beat the Tongan side by themselves. Well, interestingly, your old mentor Wayne Bennett's come out through the week and he's decided <laughs> this is the week where he's not a massive fan of the eligibility laws, the yeah. week that he's got to play against Tao Malolo and Fafita. He's, he's a very calculated human. He's just trying to take some of the heat off his players, isn't he? Big time. I, I think he just goes in there. Most of the time, I think I've done press conferences with him. He doesn't even know what he says. <laughs> he, a, just, he goes, how's that really good or what? I said... I can't remember either. You just take the attention off the England side. He doesn't want any bad negative yeah. press and he'll wear it. So he can, he'll just get all these questions about eligibility. He doesn't care. He's all for the game. He wants the game to grow. Yeah. But for this week, he doesn't, he doesn't want anything about England. Mm. So he's very smart. He's very manipulative. And all people are talking about is this. Look at us. Yeah. We're even talking about it. I know how he thinks. He's a smart dude. He doesn't say things for nothing. Mm. It's a bit rich when you've got Chris Heinington in the side. And Chris <laughs> that's Ma what I'm saying. Chris he doesn't McQueen. care. Chris McQueen played earlier in the year for England. So, But that's, this is where you've got to take way. it as a grain of salt. Yeah. Grain of salt. You just take... go, you know what? Let's just... You don't, don't worry about Wayne. Let's just worry about the England well, side. I think the Tongan side. The Tongan and, and the media does. I mean, the media, anything Wayne says, he knows people are going to talk about. No one gives a shit what any of the Pommy blokes say. But they care what Wayne Bennett says. Mm, so well, I think the game. English the English players should be more worried about Tamalala coming off the back <laughs> seven million miles an hour than what they say. Yeah, anyway. and I think they're smart enough. And, and as I said, it's a big game for England, and England are expected to win. So he wants the attention. He'll put all the all the attention on himself. I yeah. know how he rolls. Well, I I think it'll probably be an Australia Tonga grand final. There you go. And uh, I hope it is. I hope it is. I think everyone does. <laughs>